In writing a 365-page book targeting the Church of Scientology, Lawrence Wright sought out a tiny group of disgruntled ex-members led by this man, expelled from the church for financial misconduct, deception, ineptitude, and violence. Nearly all of Wright's sources were dismissed from the church for similar offenses, including embezzlement, financial wrongdoing, sexual misconduct, physical abuse, and severe violations of church doctrine. Yet these are the individuals Lawrence Wright uses to impugn the character of the church and its leader, a man responsible for a worldwide religion and its unprecedented expansion, and under whose stewardship the church's social betterment programs have become the largest non-governmental anti-drug and human rights campaigns on earth. But in writing his so-called expose on Scientology, Lawrence Wright's sources were far from credible, and Wright knew it. Their allegations, so far-fetched, that a federal judge and an appeals court dismissed them as baseless. Lawrence Wright ignored that. And when the church provided thousands of pages of evidence documenting the falsehood of those claims, Lawrence Wright continued to present the allegations as fact. When asked in a journalist forum, do you believe that journalism can lead to truth? Wright had this to say. Truth is one of those subjective terms that are pointless to get too tied up about. Wright's book was released in January 2013, but failed to generate reader interest. Still, it found itself immediately steeped in controversy about the veracity of its claims, so much so that the book's publisher would not release it in Britain, Ireland, Canada, or Australia because of their libel laws. The chances of losing a lawsuit were simply too great. Now, documentary filmmaker Alex Gibney has taken Lawrence Wright's book at its word without question or examination. I, I, I utterly trusted Larry. I wasn't looking for, you know, holes in his story. Over the two years Gibney quietly worked on his documentary, he never once contacted the church, visited a church, or spoke to any of its members. His documentary was in the can before he even mentioned it to them. And to this day, Gibney refuses to reveal his allegations to the church. Let's take a closer look at Wright and Gibney's sources. Meet Gary Scarf, spokesperson of the now defunct Cult Awareness Network, a criminal deprogramming group, many of whose members were arrested and convicted of assault, battery, and kidnapping. Gary Scarf has admitted to his participation in the seizure, forcible detention, imprisonment, beatings and traumatization of 42 separate individuals. What's also been documented as fact is that Gary Scarf is a serial liar. He once claimed in a lawsuit his mother was born in Israel. She was born in Missouri. He also maintained he was Jewish when he admitted later to being Catholic. In media interviews, Gary Scarf professed to have been a member of the People's Temple where he said he lost his family in 1978 in the mass tragedy at Jonestown. Uh, she went to Guyana, as well as did my young son. And uh, my father, of course, went down to Guyana. Um, they all perished, all three. He repeated this story over and over to the press for nearly 10 years. Yeah, I had a sexual relationship ongoing with Jim Jones himself because Jim demanded it of me. Ultimately, Gary Scarf was forced to admit in a court declaration that his entire Jonestown story was an elaborate hoax. I was never in Jonestown, I lost no relatives there, and my father is still alive. The entire story was a fabrication. But these and other lies finally caught up with the Cult Awareness Network, which was forced to declare bankruptcy and no longer exists. Even after his Jonestown hoax was exposed, unbelievably, Gary Scarf next invented another story, that he was a Scientologist and a Scientology staff member. He never was. But he used this story to sell a series of false and defamatory tales to the tabloid media so that he could become a paid witness in court cases. He provided testimony for a now-disgraced attorney by the name of Graham Barry, 
This time, it did not take long for Scarf's lies to be exposed. In fact, Lawrence Wright's chief corroborator, a known suborner of perjury named Mike Rinder, had already exposed Scarf's lie when he wrote to a reporter, Scarf was never a Scientologist or a staff member of the church any more than Scarf's wife and child died at Jonestown. Nevertheless, enter Lawrence Wright in 2011. In rounding up his sources, a collection of what's been reported as a posse of lunatics, Lawrence Wright dusts off Gary Scarf, apparently without so much as a background check. Wright credits Scarf as the source of a tale about being a bank teller who was forced to comply with a robbery in order to pay off his debt to the church. But Gary Scarf not only never was a Scientologist, there was no debt and there never was such a robbery. In fact, Gary Scarf himself recanted his story under oath as a complete fiction, admitting that he had never been a member of the church. Yet Lawrence Wright presents Gary Scarf as a credible source. Even when the church publicly exposed Lawrence Wright's journalistic irresponsibility in repeating Gary Scarf's false tales, Wright defended himself by saying he believed the man because his attorney was sitting next to him. Attorney, if you can call him that. That would be the aforementioned Graham Barry, whose license to practice law was suspended by the state of California for making fraudulent allegations about the church. And all is sworn to by his client, Gary Scarf. I provided 17 days of sworn deposition testimony, manufacturing one lie after another for Barry's use against the Church of Scientology. I made up a story that I had conspired with church lawyers to murder Can's executive director. I completely fabricated the story with the knowing participation of Mr. Barry. When I became concerned about my perjury, Barry assured me not to worry. He said he would take care of it. So Lawrence Wright trusted Gary Scarf because his attorney was present, the attorney that coached Scarf to lie under oath. By negligence or design, Lawrence Wright has chosen to conceal the truth about Gary Scarf even after Gary Scarf has admitted the stories he fed right were utter fiction. So here's what we have. Gary Scarf, violent deprogrammer and self-admitted serial liar to the media, to the courts, and to the public. Presented as fact by Lawrence Wright, swallowed whole by Alex Gibney, and greenlit by Sheila Nevins, HBO's head of documentaries and family programming who seems to know what to do with bad television. And HBO is a great place to sweep your mistakes under the carpet. In future segments, we're going to show you more of Lawrence Wright's sources. Remember this guy? The ringleader of that tiny group Lawrence Wright befriended and used to tell false stories about his former religion? Shut the fuck up. I'm he was dismissed right now, and expelled from the church for criminal activities. That's criminal, as in felony. His resume also includes episodes of shoving, kicking, punching, and extreme violence, and a honeymoon night spent in jail. But Lawrence Wright doesn't reveal any of that or any other sort of detail about this man. You'll also meet those this man calls his posse, such as the guy he nearly killed, who he now calls his best good buddy. This guy deserted his children and ruthlessly attacked his estranged wife. The thief who used to ride shotgun with the ringleader on his punching sprees. Admitted accomplices in a scheme to suborn perjury, getting others to lie under oath. And another Lawrence Wright source, the lady expelled from the church for having sexual relations with someone she was ministering to, a violation of professional conduct in any church. You'll meet her too. The paid tabloid source and his wife, whose frivolous lawsuits were repeatedly thrown out of federal court and the couple ordered to pay the church $40,000. And the writer who took advantage of his Scientology connections to take $5 million for writing scripts he never completed. Lawrence Wright and Alex Gibney could have shown you the truth about Scientology. For this is Scientology Today. A rapidly expanding religion with new churches opening by the month throughout the world. 
But instead of showing you this, Wright and Gibney have chosen to give you this man. Shut the fuck up. And his tiny group of followers. That's right. This guy the is the up. leader of all Lawrence Wright's sources. Shut the they fuck are interconnected, up. each of them corroborating the other's false stories and lies. Some for big bucks. All of them handpicked the to populate up. the story Lawrence Wright and Alex Gibney want to sell. Lawrence Wright, Alex Gibney, and executive producer up. Sheila Nevins know full well who these people really are. But you won't Shut see that up. on HBO. Shut the fuck up.